Nine million children die every year before they reach the age of five. 24,000 children a day, 1,000 an hour, 17 or so a minute. That means before I can get to the end of this sentence, some few children, very likely, will have died in terror and agony. Think of the parents of these children. Think of the fact that most of these men and women believe in God and are praying at this moment for their children to be spared and their prayers will not be answered. And worse than that, most of these people, many of these people certainly, will be going to hell because they're praying to the wrong God. Through no fault of their own, they were born into the wrong culture where they got the wrong theology. No matter how good these people are, they are doomed. You will be tortured in hell for eternity. Now, is there the slightest evidence for this? No, it just says so in Mark 9 and Matthew 13 and Revelation 14. So God created the cultural isolation of the Hindus. He engineered the circumstance of their deaths in ignorance of revelation. And then he created the penalty, which is an eternity of conscious torment in fire. On the other hand, your run-of-the-mill serial killer who spent his life raping and torturing children need only come to Jesus on death row, and after a final meal of fried chicken, he's going to spend an eternity in heaven. This vision of life has absolutely nothing to do with moral accountability. You know, something good happens to a Christian, and we're told that God is good. But when children by the tens of thousands are torn from their parents' arms and drowned, we're told that God is mysterious. Okay, this kind of faith is, is really is the perfection of narcissism. I mean, God loves me, don't you know? Given the, the misery that's being imposed on some helpless child at this instant, this kind of faith is obscene. To think in this way is to fail to reason honestly or to care sufficiently about the suffering of other human beings. And if God is good and loving and just, and he wanted to guide us morally with a book, why give us a book that supports slavery? God is not bound by moral duties. God doesn't have to be good. Whatever he commands is good. So when he commands that the Israelites to slaughter the Amalekites, that behavior becomes intrinsically good because he commanded it. This, to me, is the, is the true horror of religion, because this is a total detachment from the well-being of human beings. It, this so easily rationalizes the slaughter of children.